Hi guys, Cabo here in New Jersey. We are here on the last date of Lawrence Juber's tour on the East Coast. Lawrence is going to come out and talk to us in just a matter of fact, he's coming in. So let's welcome Lawrence Juber. Lawrence? Hello. Welcome. Nice to be here. Okay. Lawrence even brought his guitar with him. This is That's really right, a treat. Yeah. Lawrence, I want to go back just well, for a moment. Of course, it goes everywhere. I, so, I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure your fans yeah. appreciate that. Let's go back to day one. You've been quoted as saying that when I Want to Hold Your Hand came out, you first started playing guitar. Yeah, it was coincidental with that. But that wasn't my original um, inspiration for playing guitar. I mean, it was really prior to that, you know, Cliff Richard and the Shadows. You know, the Shadows, for people who aren't familiar, Shadows were kind of like the English version of the Ventures. Would have played surf music, but we didn't have any surf. <laughs> um, and then, you know, they were the first band to have Stratocasters in England. And even the Beatles were influenced by the Shadows. Now, let's talk about the Beatles for a minute. Obviously, anyone who knows anything yeah, about your career, who, who were they? They were four guys, I think. They're yeah. somewhere around. Obviously, the Beatles have had a major influence, and we'll talk about your experience with Paul mm -hmm. McCartney in just a moment. But Tell us how the Beatles have played into your career and what type of influence have they had on you? Um, I mean, the Beatles spearheaded this kind of, like the, the second Elizabethan musical renaissance. You know, the thing that happened in the early 60s in England, the, the, the previous time that it happened was during like Elizabeth the First's reign to get into you know like kind of history of it in terms of you know the Shakespearean period and stuff like that. That there was this tremendous thing that happened. It was just electric. That and the Beatles were right at the forefront of it. But they but there was also you know I mean, my local bands were the Dave Clark Five, the Kinks. You know I was a fan of the Animals, the Stones. Um, and then a little bit later on, another local band was Fairport Convention, for example. I used to go see them every week. Um, the, there was a lot of music just in the air. And I would listen to Radio Luxembourg, which was the kind of where you'd hear all the new American stuff. You didn't hear that so much on, on the BBC, because it was still very stuffy. You know, they would s beyond the point where the radio announcers had to wear tuxedos, but they were not very far beyond that point. Um, you know, so we're talking 1963, Beatlemania happened that year. I was 11 years old. My dad thought that I should play the saxophone. I wanted to play the guitar. I said, I'll play clarinet. And they didn't have enough clarinets to go around in school, so I got a guitar for my 11th birthday, which was right in that, that time frame. Um, but immediately, I th my motivation was not, oh, I want to learn Beatles songs, but what can I do with this, you know? And, and my dad took me over to a friend of his who was a, a semi-professional jazz guitar player, and he showed me some chords, and I got a book called Play in a Day, but we didn't. You talk to any, like Andy Summers, you talk to any, any, any of the, the English guitar players from that era, they all learned from Play in a Day. And I learned how to read music from that. So very quickly, my ambition became to become a, a studio musician. I didn't want to be a Beatle like that. You know? Now, ultimately, Lawrence... Well, I do want the haircut. I understand. 